All right, guys, Tom Hunt here in the kit room. You can probably see behind me. Um, I'm trying to paint things white. I'm trying to tidy things up. I'm trying to reorder this wall and redo all of my Westin banners. So next video, there should be some, this is gonna look absolutely epic, this place. Uh, I'm in the mix, trying to change it up at the moment, but I've had this question come up a number of times now about weedy venues, and I wanted to get it out as quick as possible, this video, because we are at the end of the summer now, so the weed's gonna be the thickest. It will be breaking up soon, maybe not for another month or so yet, um, but I wanted to get these tips out there to you guys as quick as possible on how to fish weedy venues because they are, they're the thickest they're gonna be. Uh, I went to a river the other day, it was absolutely choked with, um, with duckweed as well, the small sort of like floating stuff that creates huge rafts. Uh, you've got really, really thick kind of like blanket weeds, you've got lilies, you've got um, stringer weeds, streamer weeds, all different types of weed out there, and it is thickest at the moment. But don't fear, because I've got plenty of tips. However, as always, it comes down to the fine detail, so I'm really gonna give some like proper detailed tips, um, because there's right ways of doing stuff and there's wrong ways of doing stuff, and the difference makes a difference in terms of your catch rate. All right, so pay attention to those tiny details. So the question is, how do I fish really, really weedy venues? Well, a lot of you guys will know, I am not the biggest fan of fishing offset. All right, I do do it occasionally. All right, so there's a ball tease on an offset jig head. Do do it occasionally, but I always prefer, it's just my style, I prefer an open J hook. I prefer it because I feel like nothing's gonna happen before that hook point is gonna be uh, giving it a chance to get anywhere near that fish's mouth and trying to get a hook set. Something has to happen with these ones. You've got to, the fish has got to be able to move the bait out of the way for that hook point to then expose itself, all right? so. Nothing's got to happen versus something's got to happen. So I'm always going to get a slightly better hookup ratio with this. Um, but when it comes to weedy venues, how on earth am I going to fish them if I've always got an open jig head? OK, so first couple of tips, especially while the water's warm. We are end of August now, so it's probably going to be probably going to be up there towards 16 to 18 degrees still. Um, but anything north of 14 degrees 14 is my magic number. I'm going to be fishing the blade bite. All right. I love power fishing. So I've got a um, basically the West in blade bite there. That is the nine gram version. It's got a beautiful skirt on it. Um, really, really sharp hooks. I've got a hyper tease trailer on the back there as well, which works absolutely ace with these guys. And the blade at the front is a metal blade works its way through and it because the the hook is directly in line with the bait this is working the way through it almost works like a bit of a weed guard so it the the front of the bait works its way through the weed and then the hook comes through behind so i can still have an open j uh, uh, hook um, without it being able to catch up too much now occasionally you are going to notice and it's when you get weed around the front of these blades they stop working because they're, they're stuck they've got something tangled up bit of blanket weed bit of canadian pond weed whatever it is the best trick is snap snap and i mean hard hard and short and fast You're not trying to drag it through the water you want hard snaps a couple of hard snaps and nine times out of ten Using a chatterbait, I can clear the chatterbait. So even if it gets snagged up halfway through a retrieve, I can clear it and then fish the remainder of that retrieve and I'm not wasting time. So that is one way a chatterbait is an excellent weedless method um, that you can still use an open style hook with. All right, so that's my first one. My second one is going to be an offset hook. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because most of you guys will probably be quite familiar with it. So I've got it on, on a jig head there, um, a few grams. Obviously, as you've got weed coming off the bottom, let's, for example, say we're fishing a river uh, or a, or a, or a clearish canal and we've only got, say, four or five foot of water. If I've got three foot of weed and two foot of clear water, then the exercise is just gonna be, how do I keep it in that top two foot? 
all right? Um, so you can fish a jig head like that with a little bit of weight on still. You can fish it weedless. Um, couple of top tips, always keep the rod up. That really, really helps, especially with shallow running cranks. So even though your cranks have got a couple of trebles on, maybe think about swapping over to singles to make them a little bit more weedless, but really you've got to stay out of that weed. But that's only on venues when I've got a little bit of clear water over the top of some weed. So I've got maybe 18 inches or two foot clear water over the top. Keep your rod up on plastics, which have got a tendency to obviously sink. Keep the pace of it up. Um, you know, you've got to be winding at a medium pace just to keep it up out of the way. And also think about obviously reducing your jig head size as much as possible. And then you can fish it. You've only got two foot of water to play with. Then you can fish it slow, fast, jerk it about. Doesn't really matter. You've got options there. But I certainly wouldn't be trying to go definitely not above 10 grams, but probably really not above three to five grams, depending on how far I'm casting. Um, and sometimes even lighter than that. All right, so um, that's on a venue that I've got a little bit of clear water. I can still fish cranks, I can still fish spinners, I can still fish trebles. Keep your rod tip high, keep the pace up, uh, and yeah, bring, bring, keep that bait up in the water. Another option is obviously going to be like the top water as well. Um, and now we can start talking about basically where the weed comes all the way to the surface. Um, those are the types of venues that still the fish are going to hang around in those little pockets. Maybe occasionally you're looking for small dustbin lid size areas or small kind of like might just be four foot by four foot where it's slightly clearer. And those fish are going to hide in those pockets. But unless you've got pinpoint accuracy, unless you can actually see those pockets all the time, which a lot of the time you can't, you have to be able to cover water and cast and then just eventually cover one of those slightly clearer spots where those fish are going to be sitting. And when you've got that weed that comes all the way up to the surface, your top water baits are going to be the ones because they keep obviously on the surface, keep it all the way out of, uh, um, you know, they're not diving down. Um, some of them, especially the Walk the Dog styles, do come with trebles. So again, consider going over to your single style hooks uh, on your top waters. But this, now we're coming into my top tip, because a lot of people love fishing their plastics, but never really consider fishing them weightless. So I've got the ball tees here on a size 2.0. All right, most people are fishing chebs or something like that on the surface. Why not? I mean, there's you need a bait that's got enough weight in it, but on a light setup, if you're perch fishing most of the time, for example, you're fishing small rivers or canals or whatever, um, there's enough weight in that plastic. You've got a good few grams. I think the ball tees is five or six grams. Hyper tees nine centimeters is about four grams that's enough weight to just cast it just with a hook in the hook's going to add a gram to it as well but you might not need any other weight all right and people don't think about this why do you not fish weightless plastics all right there's it's got the hook in it it's going to sink a little bit anyway um but that gives you the most amount you can fish it literally just within one or two inches of the surface and it's got such a slow fall rate all right it's weedless obviously because of the weedless hook and um yeah like that is an absolute top tip i hardly ever see people fishing offset hooks without any weight on them and in those really weedy venues that is the go-to now if you need to add say one or two grams to help you with your casting, a lot of people are gonna automatically fish a cheb on the front or they're gonna fish a jig head like this, all right, with an offset hook on it, of a couple of grams on the front. But I've mentioned this on the channel before, every time you've got a nose weighted bait, he falls through the water like that because obviously he's followed, the lead falls first and the bait follows. All right, what you want to consider is getting some small amount of lead wire. Now, they do this in fly tying places and some of the predator places do it. But on a light setup like this, you want a 0.5 or a 0.6 millimeter lead wire. All right. And when you wrap it around the hook, so on a weightless ball tease like this, 
I'm gonna wrap it around the hook and I'm gonna put it here on the belly. And the reason that I do that and the reason that I get, so here's another top tip, the reason that I'm going to use a ball tease over a hypo tease a lot of the time, look how thin this one is. His tendency to fall through the water without much resistance because he's so thin, there's not much surface area there. He's going to fall at a much quicker rate than the ball tease, which is more like an, a flat oval sort of shape. There's much more surface area under the belly. And if I belly weight it as well, he's not going to fall nose first, which is much quicker. He's going to fall belly first. And with all of the resistance of that oval belly, it's going to be so much slower, almost twice as slow. All right. So if you do need to add a little bit of lead wire, add it, put it on the belly and look at selecting baits. The other type of bait that I would use, again, because of the flat profile, is the Cree Craw. So I've got an 8.5 here, but you can see how much of a flat profile it's got. And those arms are quite flat as well, all right? So that means it's gonna hang up in the water so you can fish that slower presentation a little bit better, a little bit slower. And it, the full rate, you can, you can put pauses in without it bombing and being straight down into the weed, all right? So there you go, guys. There's a few tips on sort of perch fishing or, or, or very weedy venue style fishing. Consider chatterbaits, consider offset, consider belly weights, consider flatter profile baits, um, consider surface baits. There's loads of options, all right? It's not just a, oh, the water's weedy, I can't go and fish. There are some fantastic fish to be had. You've got to find them. They're often sat on the edges of weed or in those little pockets. Um, but yeah, you need the right baits in order, to, um, in order to attack them. So there you go. Right, guys. First one I've done in a while. I've actually really enjoyed that. So I think I'm going to get some more out. Um, yeah, I've had another little baby boy. Uh, he's just a few weeks old and I'm slowly growing. The army of fishermen in my family have got two lads now. But um, yeah, really enjoyed that. So pop some comments below. I'd love to hear what your next question might want to be around, you know, what are your technical difficulties you've got in your lure fishing? If there's anything you think I can help with or you want to start a conversation, just pop it down below. I try and get back to everyone. And that's what this channel's all about. So nice one. All right, guys, better go. I'll see you on the next one.